1. Define population and sample. A population refers to the entire group of individuals, items, or data points that are being studied or analysed. It encompasses all the units or elements that possess common characteristics and it is often the target of a study or analysis. A sample is a subset of individuals, items or observations selected from a larger group or population to represent the characteristics of that larger group. It is a smaller, manageable portion of a population studied to make inferences about the whole population. 2. What do you mean by sampling error? Sampling error refers to the difference between a true population parameter and an estimate of the parameter generated from a sample. 3. Differentiate between primary and secondary data. The key differences between primary and secondary data are a. Primary data is information collected directly by the researcher for a specific research purpose, while secondary data is information that has already been collected by someone else for a different purpose and is now being reused. b. Secondary data may need precautions and editing before use, while primary data does not. 4. State any four types of variables. The four types of variables are a. Nominal variable B, ordinal variable C, interval variable D, ratio variable 5, define scientific research. Scientific research is a systematic process that involves the collection and analysis of data to develop and test hypotheses, theories, or models that explain natural phenomena. Group B6. What is sampling? Discuss the type of probability sampling procedure equal sign. Sampling is the process of selecting a subset of individuals or units from a larger population to make inferences about the entire population. The main types of probability sampling procedures are simple random sampling. In simple random sampling, every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected for the sample. This is the most basic form of probability sampling and can be done by assigning each population member a number and using a random number generator or random number table to select the sample. Systematic sampling Systematic sampling involves selecting every nth member of the population after a random start. For example, if selecting a sample of 20 from a population of 100, Every fifth member would be chosen after randomly selecting the first through fifth as the starting point. This method is easier to implement than simple random sampling. Stratified sampling. Stratified sampling involves dividing the population into mutually exclusive and exhaustive subgroups. Strata, based on one or more characteristics, and then selecting a simple random sample from each stratum. This ensures that the sample is representative of the population in terms of the stratifying variables. Proportional allocation, where the sample size from each stratum is proportional to the population size of that stratum, is commonly used. Cluster sampling. In cluster sampling, the population is divided into mutually exclusive and exhaustive groups called clusters. A simple random sample of clusters is selected and then either all elements within the selected clusters are included in the sample, or a subsample of elements is randomly selected from each selected cluster. This method is often used when the population is geographically dispersed. 7. Discuss the process of scientific research. Equal sign the scientific research process. 1. Formulating the research problem. The first step is to identify a specific and clearly defined research problem or question that the researcher believes they can investigate and solve. This often arises from the researcher's own experiences or observations. 2. Extensive literature survey. The researcher then undertakes a thorough review of existing literature, including academic journals, books, reports and other relevant sources, to understand the current state of knowledge on the research problem. 3. Developing hypotheses. Based on the literature review, the researcher formulates one or more testable hypotheses. 
statements about the relationship between variables that can be empirically evaluated. 4. Designing the research methodology. The researcher then plans the research design, including the sampling method, data collection techniques, and analytical procedures to be used. 5. Data collection. The researcher collects data either through experiments, observations, surveys, or other appropriate methods to test the hypotheses. 6. Data analysis. The collected data is analysed using statistical techniques and other analytical tools to identify patterns, trends and relationships. 7. Hypothesis. Testing. The researcher then tests the hypotheses by comparing the observed data against the predicted outcomes. This allows the hypotheses to be accepted, rejected or refined. 8. Interpretation and generalisation. The researcher interprets the findings and attempts to draw generalizable conclusions that contribute to the broader understanding of the research problem. This may lead to the development of new theories or the refinement of existing ones. 9. Reporting and dissemination. Finally, the researcher prepares a detailed report documenting the entire research process, findings, and conclusions which is then shared with the scientific community through publications, conferences, or other means. The scientific research process is often iterative, with the results of one study leading to new questions and hypotheses that can be investigated in subsequent research. This cycle of observation, hypothesis, experimentation, and refinement is central to the advancement of scientific knowledge. Eight. What is research design? Describe the features of research design. Equal sign. Research design is a plan that outlines the procedures and methods that will be used to carry out a research project. It is a blueprint that specifies the sources and types of data relevant to the research problem, the strategy that will be used to collect and analyse the data and the time and cost budgets. The key features of a good research design include Validity A good research design helps to ensure that the study measures what it is supposed to measure. It selects the right measuring tools to gauge results according to the research objective. Reliability A well-designed research study generates similar results every time it is performed. The research design must be reliable to yield consistent findings. Objectivity At the start of the research, a researcher needs to make some assumptions that will be tested. A proper research design ensures that the assumptions are free of bias and neutral. Generalizability A good research design draws an outcome that can be applied to a large set of people and is not limited to the sample size or the specific context of the study. Efficiency. A well-designed study can help to minimise errors, reduce bias, and maximise the use of resources. It saves the researchers time by effectively describing the data necessary for testing hypotheses. Replicability. A strong research design helps increase the validity of the findings by ensuring that the results are not due to chance or other factors. It allows the study to be replicated by other researchers to confirm the findings. Other important features include clearly defined research questions and objectives, appropriate research methodology and data collection methods, suitable sample design and sample size, effective data analysis techniques, Consideration of potential challenges and limitations. In summary, a good research design is essential for conducting high-quality research that yields reliable, valid and generalisable results. It provides a structure and direction to the research process, ensuring that the study is carried out efficiently and effectively. 9. Write short note on anyone. A. Validity. Validity in research refers to the extent to which a study accurately measures what it intends to measure. It is a critical aspect of research design, ensuring that the data collected is reliable and meaningful.
validity can be categorized into different types, including construct validity, content validity, face validity, and criterion validity. Construct validity assesses whether a measurement tool truly represents the concept being studied, while content validity ensures that a test covers all relevant aspects of the subject. Face validity considers how suitable the test appears on the surface, and criterion validity compares test results with an established criterion. Achieving validity in research is essential to ensure that the findings are accurate, trustworthy, and applicable to the real world. B. Research problem. A research problem is a specific challenge or knowledge gap that sets the foundation for a research study. It is a clear and concise statement that describes the issue or problem that the research project aims to address. The research problem is the primary statement about a topic in a field of study, and the findings from a research undertaking provide solutions to the research problem. It is the defining statement that informs the sources and methodologies to be applied to find and recommend proposals for the area of contention. A well-formulated research problem is essential as it forms the basis of a strong research paper, illustrating a clear focus and direction for the study. The research problem is the first step in planning a research paper preventing a project from lacking a clear direction and ensuring that the study addresses a significant and relevant issue within the field of study. Group C10. Describe the techniques of primary data collection. Prepare a set of questionnaire for collating data. Equal sign. Primary data collection involves gathering information directly from the source for a specific research purpose. There are various techniques for collecting primary data, including one. Surveys. Surveys involve asking a series of questions to a sample of individuals to gather information about their opinions, behaviours or characteristics. Surveys can be conducted through face-to-face -face interviews, telephone interviews, online surveys or mailed questionnaires. 2. Interviews. Interviews are direct conversations between the researcher and the respondent to gather detailed information. Interviews can be structured with a predetermined set of questions or unstructured, more open-ended. 3. Observations. Observations involve watching and recording behaviours, events or activities in a systematic manner. This method is useful for studying behaviours in natural settings without direct interference. 4. Experiments Experiments involve manipulating variables to observe the effect on an outcome. This method allows researchers to establish cause and effect relationships. 5. Focus groups Focus groups involve a small group of participants discussing a specific topic guided by a moderator. This method is useful for exploring attitudes, perceptions and preferences. 6. Case studies Case studies involve an in-depth analysis of a single individual, group or event. This method provides detailed insights into complex phenomena. Sample questionnaire for data collection title Customer Satisfaction Survey 1 Demographic Information Age 2 Product Service Evaluation How satisfied are you with our product service? Scale 1 5 What do you like most about our product service? What improvements would you suggest? 3 Purchase Behaviour How often do you purchase our product service? daily slash weekly slash monthly slash yearly. What factors influence your decision to purchase from us? 4. Customer service. How would you rate our customer service? Excellent slash good slash average slash poor. Have you faced any issues with our customer service? If yes, please elaborate. 5. Overall experience. Would you recommend our product service to others? Yes, no. Any additional comments or suggestions? This questionnaire can be customised based on the specific research objectives and the target audience. Conducting pilot testing and ensuring clarity and relevance of questions 
are essential for effective data collection. 11. Describe the format of the research report in detail. General format of a research report is given below 1. Preliminary section O title page includes the title of the report, author's name, institutional affiliation and date. O. Preface or acknowledgements. Expresses gratitude to those who contributed to the research. O. Table of contents. Lists the sections and subsections with corresponding page numbers. O. List of tables, if any. Enumerates tables used in the report. O. List of figures, if any. Enumerates figures, charts, graphs, etc. Used in the report. 2. Main body of the report. Textual body. O. Introduction. Statement of the problem. Clearly defines the research question or issue. Objectives of the study. Outlines the goals of the research. Hypotheses to be tested. If applicable, states the hypotheses. Significance of the problem. Explains why the research is important. Assumptions and delimitations describes any limitations or assumptions. Definitions of important terms clarifies key terms used in the study. A review of related literature. Summarizes existing research relevant to the topic. O design of the study. Method and procedure used. Details the research design, for example experimental survey, case study. Tools of research or sources of data. Specifies data collection instruments. Techniques of data collection. Describes how data were gathered. Description of techniques used. Provides specifics on data analysis methods. O analysis and presentation of data. Analysis of data. Presents statistical or qualitative analysis. Tables and interpretation. Displays data in tabular form. Figures and interpretation. Visualizes data using graphs or charts. O conclusions discussion of results. Interprets findings in light of research objectives, main findings and inferences. Summarizes key results. Implications of the findings and limitations. Discusses practical implications and study limitations. Suggestions for further studies. Proposes areas for future research. 3. Reference section. O. Bibliography. Lists all cited sources using a specific citation style, for example APA, MLA. OA appendices, if any. Includes supplementary material, for example raw data, additional tables. O index or glossary, if any. Provides an index of terms or concepts. If you like this video, do like, share and subscribe the channel. Happy studying.